Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Tonight we're in 1 Kings chapter 8. It's a very, very long chapter, all 66 verses of it. And the theme that I'm going to pick up on tonight, as you saw in the title, it's not a very popular one. The suffering that sin can bring. And are you suffering because of your sin? Now that's not something that a lot of people, especially ministers or whatnot, like to talk about today because it's not always the case that someone who's going through a hard time is in sin or has sinned. Let's not forget there's an entire book in the Bible, Job, dedicated to a man who had done nothing wrong, suffered tremendously because the Lord allowed him to go through a just ridiculously tough time, um, a horrible trial and tribulation as a proof of his faith. Um, he allowed Satan to brutalize Job in so many ways, and his wife was of absolutely no help. Um, just read in Job chapters 1 and 2, and you'll see. And so it's not always the case. But on the other side of that coin, which doesn't seem to be talked about very much, probably because the church abused it in the past, and because like Job's friends, oftentimes people will be like, well, you're going through something, you're suffering, you must have sinned in some way. And because of that, it's not talked about a whole lot, but just because it's not always true doesn't mean it's never true. I want to take you to a few verses in 1 Kings chapter 8, and it's just, it kind of looks into a very real and very serious issue. Let's see here. Let's start in verses 31 and 32. This is Solomon speaking. I'm at a dedication to the temple, or at the dedication of the temple. The temple had been built, and so here is the dedication time for that. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. When anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. So Solomon is praying that the wicked will be condemned and that the righteous will be justified. Is that an unfair prayer to pray? Absolutely not. Evil should be punished. Good should be rewarded. Not The definitions of what's right and wrong may differ, but I don't think anyone would disagree that right should be awarded and evil punished. In verse 33, when your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you. Verse 35, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. Verse 37, when there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is. All of these things, all of these punishments, because there is sin. There is a direct correlation. In the book of Judges, one thing that I didn't overly focus on a whole, whole lot, but some I'm going to focus on for now, is pretty much every time that Israel was beaten down by another nation, it mentions that they had sinned and turned away from God and turned to idols. And that's a theme that will be seen later on in the Kings. There is a punishment for sin. There is a, there is a negative corresponding reaction when we do something wrong. And sometimes, let's be honest, we suffer because we have sinned. We're in a bad situation, we're in a pickle, because we've done something wrong. And we know we have, Christian or not, we should all be able to agree on the fact that we've all messed up, we've all done things wrong, and there, sometimes we've gotten away with it, but there's a good number of times when we've paid for what we did. When someone found out, or maybe no one found out, but just the consequences of our wrong actions just ended up bad. And it is deservedly so. The end part of this in verse 38, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart, that's pretty key because when you're doing something wrong, it's really a plague of your own heart. It's your fault. And spreads out his hands toward this temple. Well, nowadays, we're the temple in the New Testament. There's no physical temple to spread our hands toward. Then here in heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. And well, God gave me the land of America. This is my land. And right now, I'm very, very happy where I am. I'm very content before the Lord. 
I'm pleased with where life is headed. Everything isn't perfect, but things are going really, really well. And I have to say, when I did that repentance thing about a month or two ago, it did help. It, it really did. Things that maybe it's, yeah, I guess you could call it just my perception, but life has been going really, really good recently. And I would say that my sin was holding me back. There was, there was a little bit of a, it wasn't like some, oh my gosh, life is terrible type thing, but life wasn't as good as it could have been. And I, and I would say, you know, depending on the sin you've committed, there is a corresponding, uh, there's a corresponding punishment. So it's not, um, Edergay may not be the worst thing in the world, but it was holding me back. And let's just be honest, we've all done things that are wrong. We've all done things that are sinful. And if you are my brother and sister in Christ, please heed this warning because your sin, it will find you out. You will be punished for it. God will make sure your wickedness is returned on your head. And I don't need to tell you what your sin is. You know what it is. The good news is you can come to the Lord right now and repent of that sin. So sometimes we do suffer for sin. Sometimes it is our fault. And it would be wrong to completely ignore and not look at that. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.